Space. The final frontier. No, we're not talking science fiction. Humans have gone to the moon and hope to go even farther one day. But past and present space missions wouldn't be possible without a tried and true form of transportation back on Earth. Whether they're hauling rocket segments, fuel, or pulling spacecraft to the launch pad, railroads help make all this possible. Coming up, we're looking at how trains help NASA and other agencies get the job done. We'll begin our journey at a place that's launched countless missions into orbit and beyond, NASA's Kennedy Space Center. You know, when you think about the big machines here on Florida's Space Coast, the first things that probably come to mind are the massive crawlers that have been used for years to transport rockets and space shuttles to the launch pad. These beasts are propelled like locomotives. Two big diesel engines from the 1960s power 16 electric traction motors. And those big engines are V16s built by Alco, which is the American locomotive company for all you non-rail fans. You better believe they've taken good care of these things over the decades. Look at how clean this engine is. The crawlers here have always been in the spotlight, but NASA once used some other diesel electric machines on its very own short line railroad. Their locomotives of choice were three SW1500s built by General Motors' Electromotive Division, but they did have some Alcos in the early years. The railroad hauled the chemicals needed for rocket fuel and also components that made up the rockets themselves. This train is hauling some very specialized rolling stock. Helium tank cars are up front and at the back of the train. This long, thin white tank transports liquid hydrogen, and that larger tank carries liquid oxygen. These were on their way to be used at a SpaceX facility. Of course, the NASA railroad started long before there was any talk of privatized space travel. It all began in 1963 when the Kennedy Space Center was connected by rail to the Florida East Coast Railway mainline. The railroad was used to haul in construction materials as the U.S. raced to get a man on the moon. Of course, they've always had to coexist with the creatures out here. Sadly, when the shuttle program ended in 2011, NASA's railroad wasn't needed much anymore. It shut down in 2015 and its locomotives were offloaded. Luckily, one of them ended up at the Gold Coast Railroad Museum in Miami. But there was good news in 2020. The railroad was reactivated to haul components for NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS. Those components will be used in the Artemis program, which we'll talk about in a minute. These days, NASA's motive power is a little underwhelming. Mobile rail car movers known as shuttle wagons. It's too bad they got rid of their locomotives. I mean, let's face it, it's hard to beat a switcher like this painted in NASA's iconic colors. You know, I could say something cliche about the train you're about to see, like it's out of this world, but in reality, it's pretty down to earth because railroads specialize in hauling oversized loads. It's September 24th, 2023, and we're just northwest of Atlanta, Georgia, at a place the railroad calls Jack Mack. One thing I can tell you about railroad operations is that there's a lot of hurry up and wait, and I'd be doing a lot of waiting at this location today. But there would be train after train to keep me occupied. Meanwhile, around six miles from here, the train I wanted to see was sitting on a siding in Mableton, Georgia. It's carrying components that will make up solid rocket boosters for an upcoming NASA launch, and we'll talk about that in a second. Most of the traffic you'll see passing by Jack Mack is pretty conventional. Mixed freight, intermodals, and loaded and empty coal trains. Occasionally, you'll see something exotic, but it may not be on the rails. And if you like history, well, the most historic thing I spotted here was this old Southern Railway boxcar that seems to have been forgotten on an industrial spur. Anyway, let's move on to the main event. I would argue this move is historic and hard to forget. The cargo hauled by Norfolk Southern Train 056 will eventually be used to get NASA's Artemis II mission into space. 
That mission will take four astronauts around the moon and back. The train here hauls 10 booster motor segments for NASA's space launch system. These started their journey at a Northrop Grumman facility in Utah. A specially painted Union Pacific locomotive would pull them until the train entered Norfolk Southern Territory. The lead locomotive today also has a special paint scheme that honors our nation's veterans. On September 25th, the rocket segments arrived at the Kennedy Space Center. Once the twin boosters are assembled, they will each stand 17 stories tall. Of course, the folks at Kennedy Space Center have had plenty of practice over the years unloading and assembling rocket boosters. You can see a clamshell-like covering protects the booster segments, which ride on cradles attached to the flat cars. And those flat cars are pretty substantial with eight axles. Two of them have HVAC systems that keep the aft sections of the rocket boosters at an optimal temperature of 75 degrees. According to the Union Pacific team that retrofitted the cars, this has to be done because the materials used to build the aft sections of the boosters are sensitive to extreme temperatures during transit. And what about the box cars? Well, those act as buffer cars to help distribute the weight of the train. According to Union Pacific, they're filled with 50,000 pounds of concrete to improve train handling. The lead box car has rounded bars on the outside to ensure the loads behind it can clear obstacles. All right, once they get everything unloaded and assembled, this is what the SLS will look like in action. This is the unmanned Artemis 1 mission that launched on November 16th, 2022. And liftoff of Artemis 1, we rise together back to the moon and beyond. Confirmation that the solid rocket boosters have separated. Back in Atlanta, I was not the only one out documenting this move. It sounded like Norfolk Southern was about to get in on the action too. Yeah, 056, they want you to go through spring uh, no greater than one zero, no greater than 10 miles per hour at spring for your photo op. These photos are available for download on the railroad's website. I think their shots turned out pretty well. According to NASA, the Artemis II launch will be no earlier than November of 2024. All right, we've seen NASA's crawler in action with its huge Alco engines, but the Russians, well, they do things a little differently. They use a train to move their fully assembled rockets to the launch pad. Welcome to the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. This is where they launched Sputnik, the little satellite that ignited the space race. It's September 2017 and this train, hauling the Soyuz MS-06 spacecraft and its Soyuz booster, is headed to the launch pad. Fully assembled, the Soyuz rocket is around 165 feet tall and the Soyuz spacecraft itself is hidden inside a shroud at the top. It takes the train a few hours to slowly creep to the launch site. When it gets there, that huge green rail car will lift the rocket into its vertical launch position. Umbilical and service towers then surround the craft so crews can make final preparations for its trip to space. Eventually, this rocket would take three crew members, one Russian and two Americans to the International Space Station. And lift off. Mark Vandehei, Alexander Mazurkin, and Joe Acaba lifting off. And check this out. As they head into space, you can see a little toy model of Sputnik. When it starts floating, that tells the crew they've entered zero gravity. You'll notice I used a lot of footage from NASA in this video. They do a great job of documenting our nation's space program. Anyway, I want to leave you with one final thought. You know, I was born long after the Apollo moon landings, but it seemed like those early missions were something the entire country got behind. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had a common goal today that everyone agreed on? Eventually, the Artemis III mission planned for 2025 will land humans on the moon once again. I think this is extremely exciting and I'll be following NASA's progress. Okay, that's it for now. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.